pizza time. Do it! Be not befuddled. I am here by the magic of technology. Picture in picture, PIP, to make a critical uh, assessment of this Yabo. Yet another box opening. As we slice away from ourselves and make the seam openings correctly in that regard, and then fixing. Oh, and look. Oh, look him. You're cutting towards yourself. That's just. Oh, and again. Once again, just demonstrate to the kiddies how to get bloody. Don't get bloody. Stab a body. Always go away from yourself with a knife. And then, of course, this is obviously from a. What? Look at this crap. That was stuffed in a corner, is what it obviously is. Like, that's, that's what I'm commenting on there is the bangs in the box, whatever. This is obviously by the butcher paper from smokingpipes.com. Thank you very much. And did you know that you can turn your old pipes into cash, essentially, into uh, store credit at smokingpipes.com? Look it up on their website. Find out more if you're interested. Uh, and then I'm going to do some uh, unrolling here first, preliminary, instead of going. Unroll, show, unroll, show, unroll, show. I'm just gonna keep unrolling for a bit so we've got some uh, some ammunition, as it were. That's, you're cute. Look at you, how cute you are, you old bastard. All right, anyway, get rid of the bitch paper and then we're gonna go right into this box opening. Again, exclusive by Cornell and Dio. This tobacco is exclusive. And this one, ah, you're gonna see a theme, engine number 99. 99! I like saying that word. Nanda. Engine number 113. Hmm. Uh, engine number 611. Keep on rolling along with the uh, tobacco break. Ah, and a break. They need to go on vacation to Key Largo by GLP. I'm looking forward to this one. This one sounds great. This description of the tobacco and the mixtures. Very much up my alley. And then of course Russ Willett's Phoenix from the Ashes, Warhorse Bar. I love that one. If you haven't tried it, you haven't tried it. You don't know. You need to try it. That and the green. Uh, this one's from Hearth and Home uh, and it's uh, Virginia memory because I literally have no memory of Virginia so I needed to buy a tin of it to, to the place. <coughs> She's trying to complete the collections there obviously. And then in this hermetically sealed surgical bag is a human brain. I'm kidding. Uh, these are these are always tricky for me. I'm like a baboon when it comes to opening up these kind of bags. Uh, but anyway, this is Briarworks Tobacco Peach Cobbler, and this is so delectable. If you like peach cobbler in real life, you love it in the fantasy tobacco world where you're smoking it out of a pipe. It literally tastes like peach cobbler. It's delicious tobacco. Burns nice, no tongue bite. And then of course, the pudding bourbon barrel aged. Always a standard to add to the library, as it were, or the cellar. And the Mississippi uh, River uh, beer, rum barrel aged. I'm not drinking the rum before they put it in there, I swear. Uh, <laughs> I've had a break from drinking. As we open another uh, roll of Smarties. Big uh, Seattle Pipe Club fan, obviously. Uh, Rory has them all, keeps them all, stacks them all. Uh, and if you haven't tried them all, and you're uh, missing out on them all. They're really all good, good. There's no misses in there. I haven't had a bad tobacco from them yet. Engine number 382, I believe that. Unless I'm. Yeah, four. That's right. Thank you. You say this, I miscounted, but the other Rory has acquitted me. Or he's also confused. And uh, what the hell are you doing in there? What? In Two weeks later. Dear Lord in heaven, it's been like a year. Ah, old Joel Krantz. Yes. I've got old Joel Krantz, the original, from Cornell India. And then look, old Joel Krantz, blue label. Again, Cornell India. And I think you'll see a theme developing here as well. Old Joe Krantz, red label. Cornell and Neil. And what's this? What's that? Old Joe Krantz, white label by Cornell and Neil. Yes, indeed. That's four old Joe Krantz's cloned. And then uh, the first responders, I believe is one of their first honoring cans, but this is a tin of tobacco I've been wanting to try. And of course, I want to honor the first responders. Epiphany. This is the closest thing to the tobacco that Einstein smoked, from what I understand, which was Revelation. Speakeasy Navy Blend. This is a, uh, a flake cut bourbon, I believe. It's good stuff. Got a second tin of it there. And this is an empty box. Sometimes you just have to get away to put things in perspective. Wind down. This helps. Amphora. 
There's no rush here. Just plenty of time to concentrate on the really important things. Come on, boy. Let's go fishing. Mellon Bite Free Amphora. The comfortable smoke. Give me a cool, misty morning. The rugged Swedish coast and nothing to do but enjoy them. Then give me Borkum Riff bourbon flavored tobacco. In Sweden, we know that flavoring our fine tobacco softens and enriches them. And that's just what we do with Borkum Riff. Bourbon flavored Borkum Riff is my favorite smoke. And one of life's simple pleasures. Greetings and salutations, friends, is I, Rory O'Connell, your buddy and pal on the wonderful, magnificent, surprising, adventurous, and oftentimes unexpected road that is to Bacchiana and Briar. And what a magnificent and blessed road it is, even in spite of unexpected challenges. Mm. Ah, but sorry, that's easier said than experienced. Well, I'm experiencing it right now. And just to be kind and to give you my love and greetings standing up in the alfresco beauty of Southern California. God bless America. I am uh, standing for a reason. No, it's not because I'm in the presence of royalty or someone that deserves my respect. Oh, captain, my captain but rather because uh, I have been dealing with some medical issues that have been resolved, <laughs> so they say. I am on the road to convalescence, healing, as it were, and uh, my road requires no sitting on my bum uh, for a couple of weeks. Can you believe that? You know, I can kind of half squat on one cheek or lay down supine like the Lord at the Last Supper, because he reclined on one side, usually the left, and that's because of digestion. Always try to sleep on the left side, fellas. It'll help you with indigestion and acid reflux. Trust me, years of uh, pathology and study has proven that, and uh, you're welcome. It's a million dollar piece of advice for those of you who deal with indigestion. Uh, now, it won't solve your indigestion from eating nachos at two in the morning, but uh, anyway, getting back to me, <clears throat> and my uh, issue at hand. I can't sit, so I'm standing in the alfresco of beautiful Southern Southern California uh, to share my uh, episode with you because I can't sit. And that's no shite, and that sucks. But I'm making the best of it. And the good Lord is healing me day by day. It's in a place where, uh, you know, all darkness would seem to be. It's as though it's in a place where the sun don't shine. I'll leave it at that. Uh, and uh, to have an incision, <laughs> as it were, in that area is a terribly unpleasant thing. I've shared this with the whole world here. Ah, bless your heart. Now you're having Hellraiser moments in your imagination. If you've got the curse slash gift of visualization, as Rory does. But, uh, uh, you know, barring the fact that I had this medical procedure that made things on the road to recovery for me after 13 plus weeks of uh, suffering, even in Hawaii. You never know it because I'm a trooper and my wife tells me not to bitch. But uh, truth be told, uh, this medical procedure, I would never address it as anything other than that. I would in a million years never call it a back alley SS Nazi uh, experimentation surgery. Not in a hundred million years. That would be rude to call it that. That wasn't terrifying on the level of uh, a Cronenberg horror film. No, that would be wrong to say that as well. I think you get the point. Anywho, that's why I'm standing, and uh, apologies for that, but uh, I'm gonna hover. It's one of the things I hate most. I always tell that to the kids, you know, they're like standing over me at the dinner table, like picking up chopsticks or forks, whatever. I'm like, don't hover! Driving me cuckoo ruts. And uh, yeah, cuckoo ruts, I, I just made that, that word up. Anyway, so apologies for that. And I also have a big apology. This episode was supposed to be, or uh, ought have been, the Nemo Romeo Domenico interview episode. And, uh, you know, in light of the fact that I've gone through some stuff, as you can tell, and had that emergency procedure, uh, I have not been able to tie it together with Nemo, and he's busy as all get out. 
I guess it's fryer season. I don't know. Maybe it's, he's just busy all the time. Truth be told, I think uh, anybody would source him for fryer, including all the factories. I think they all do. So he's busy. Uh, but we'll get to that interview. I promise you. Promise, promise, promise you that. Uh, but uh, my apologies for that. Okay, on to uh, cool news. Really neat uh, tobacco news. There is a wonderful new release from pipesandcigars.com. And of course, I'm going to give credit to Russ Ouellette, the Russ Ouellette, the man who brought a phoenix back from the ashes, Bengal Slices, along with Warhorse as well. But Bengal Slices is our subject of interest because they did something really fantastic. Now, I'm going to uh, get some, some research up here real quick. And uh, hold on, bear with me. I want to get everything right now. Okay, so Bengal Slices was taken and a special reserve of it with I think a little bit less uh, Latakia, I'm not 100% certain it's either a little less Latakia or a little less Perique, was put into a special reserve blend of the tobaccos they use for it. And that was taken and that was aged for a month in a single barrel, single uh, cask of uh, Blattens. Now I know this for a fact, I think it's Blattens, at least single barrel Mont whiskey barrel. And so that tobacco got a month in a blackened barrel. They said, they intimate on the website on pipesandcigars.com that it's, they can't say who it is on the site, whose barrel it is, but they're famous for their uh, their uh, racehorse uh, stoppers. And that's what Blanton's known for, as they have these really cool uh, racehorse with jockey stoppers for each of their, I think it's eight. Yeah, it's eight bottles you can get, or eight stoppers you can collect of theirs. Uh, but, uh, so they take it, they age it for a month, this uh, Bengal Slices, this fantastic seller series or seller edition, a uh, limited edition of that. Uh, and after a month, they then press it, make it into cakes, and voila. And I ordered five tins because I didn't want to be too greedy this time. I give you guys an opportunity, but you've got a week before I go hunting for more. Yes, Rory has an OCD and only cash deposits. It's not that an obsessive compulsive disorder when it comes to ordering tobacco, but uh, if it's good, it's good. You want to hold on to it, especially if it's something they call special reserve or limited edition. But uh, uh, yeah, so that Bengal Slices, some special. Get it while you can. Pipesandcigars.com. It'll be gone soon. Just like all the good stuff, it all goes, doesn't it? It's just part of life. You know, uh, supply and demand. That's what keeps it up. Mm. And something about uh, special edition, limited edition, just pulls me in I'm a sucker for that you know that's why I got all the Star Wars figures I got they're a limited edition you know black series this and that and uh, I'm an idiot anywho <laughs> speaking of collectibles <laughs> it's time for something different you know we've got the Yabo of course but uh, I also wanted to show you some stuff that I've already unboxed that I have attributed to my museum of Tabakiana so it is Tabakiana time that's right because put that in your pipe and smoke it. It's not just about Rory hoarding and stashing away treasure troves of tobacco. Okay. No, it's actually also about tobacco. Okay. I, I stated that was one of my purposes in wanting to do these, uh, these little shows uh, to, to share some stuff about history and some really neat stuff that's out there. It's at your fingertips as well if you want it. Uh, I want to also recommend you on that level to check it out the Amsterdam Pipe Museum. Yeah, they're on Instagram, and I believe they're on YouTube as well. There's some really informative stuff. They've got an incredible museum if you're ever in Holland. Hey, don't just go to the wacky tobacco shops, <laughs> the, the coffee shops as they were. Uh, and it's coffee shops, not cafes. Because a cafe is actually like a restaurant. And you could probably order like a marijuana joint there. But they'll just be like, hey, scoundrel, just go where the others go. <coughs> and that is a coffee shop. Uh, <coughs> but anywho. Don't go to the coffee shops, go to the Amsterdam Pipe Museum and see the history of what is uh, the pipe. Oh, speaking of which, this is my McClary of Ingles. Rory O'Hallock Special, my pot pipe. No pot, stay in school, kids. Uh, and I just love this pipe so much. Thank you, David. McClary of Ingles Fine Briar Pipes, available now on the eBay, as always. If you can get them, if you can't, just uh, message me and uh, if you really would like to have some of the custom or something you've seen before that Rory can hopefully help you uh, develop a relationship with the David McClary and get yourself uh, a direct purchase for that. So, mm. And 
Speaking of limited edition, I'm smoking out of here uh, before we get into tobacco time, some uh, Plum Pudding Special Reserve. I'm enjoying my Plum Pudding Special Reserve, just as I imagine this fascinating fellow would. But he's got a little like a meerschaum, with a little bit of, uh, it looks like Dutch paint on it. They attribute this to Germany, uh, folks I bought it from. There's no visible markings on it. It's hand carved wood, hand painted. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know, realistically, something like this could float around for a while, but it, you know, it wouldn't keep the paint that well if, unless it was from like the 70s. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and say this fella is from the 70s or the 1980s, which is still, uh, you know, ridiculously uh, 40, 50 years ago. Uh, I'm also gonna say, uh, you know, maybe Bavarian, but he's probably Dutch. But uh, there's his little pipe smoker I got. Uh, you know, I use a little statue to add to my shelves around my tobacco. I love that little museum for Rory. Enjoy that fella. And uh, let's uh, let's see. I, I've also got this one, speaking of uh, Bavarian, Austrian. And this is a carved, they call it a fisherman's bust. But I, you know, it's funny to me is, what the hell qualifies this guy as a fisherman? He's wearing a hat and he's got a pipe. Am I, am I a freaking fisherman now? Is that, does that satisfy it? I suppose that would fit the bill. And a lot of us do like fish. I do love fish. Uh, but uh, check him out. He's neat, isn't he? And carp. Uh, looks like he's been sold before. He's got a little bit of uh, residue from uh, somebody sticking on him on the bottom. But there's no visible markings again. Hand carved, solid chunk of wood. I'm gonna go ahead and say this guy is Bavarian or Austrian. And due to my elaborate world travels, I may know that or not, I may be an expert or full of shite. You'll never know. But uh, yeah, he's a neat, good sized bust. I got him for a, a very low price on, I believe he was an Etsy purchase. Yes, and that first one was uh, eBay. And then we move on to, uh, ah, this guy's kind of like, uh, he's unmarked, but he's made out of like uh, resin. Okay, he's a sea captain. Now he is a sea captain because he's, uh, he's wearing the rubber coat and the sea captain's, but the sea captain's hat. And he's got a globe in front of him. That's off light. But he's got a nice, well-lit pipe there. Look, he's like, he may have a cover on it. Either that or that's just the ash they're portraying there. Give me a 360. If I don't drop it, it'll be a miracle. Because there's a million flies pissing around me. I feel like I'm in Spain right now for crying out loud. Somebody must have just moached or God knows what. Anywho, uh, he looks like a Hallmark piece. I don't know, I'm gonna call him Captain Ron without the eye patch. I don't know, I don't know, but he fits in my library and my nook very nicely. Got some cool details on the bottom there. You got a book and a map. And uh, yeah. he's got a pot belly though, God bless him. Love you, sleeping. He's been having too much gumbo or whatever the hell they're serving on the ship. Ah, anyway, ah, so that moves on to that. And I got uh, uh, one more stash, and this is from Taiwan. And uh, I love Huckleberry Finn, as you know, one of my favorite books. And I collect Huck Finn statues, especially. And they got big arse pipes with them. Look at that, that's like a massive. He's a daring little bastard though. He's like, oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not even trying to hold it with my hand. Suck on a nut. I don't know what. <laughs> He does not have a straw cap on though. I would say that there's always those weird differentials when you get something, uh, you know, from another culture that's representing the United States. I put it that way. That's a nice way to put it. Uh, and they always put like a cowboy hat on them. It should be a straw straw hat, wouldn't it? Shouldn't it? You know, by rights. And so, but it's still, it's very Huck Finn. I mean, look at that. That ruddy red hair. You know, he's a Rory, all right. But Huck Finn in statue form. And he sits with my uh, Saloni tobacco. Don't ask me why. It's where he fits, essentially. Uh, <clears throat> one more uh, piece of strangeness, as I put my pipe down. And it, it was uh, something I saw that I thought was really fantastic, because it's up for bid, and I was like, what the hell is this? Back in the 70s, Avon. That's right. Avon, ladies. Call, uh, Avon calling away. I see, that's, that should prove that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but Avon calling created a man's product that women could buy for their fellas. And back then, I guess the fellas, they uh, they all still smoked pipes, or pipes were still an attractive thing. You were, yeah. 
which by the way is bullshit. <coughs> Bullocks. <coughs> Anywho, this is uh, this is the Avon Calabash pipe. It's a cologne <laughs> in a Calabash pipe form called Deep Woods Aftershave. Three fluid ounces of pure death, ladies and gentlemen. Old man hell. And I know that because I accidentally or stupidly made the mistake of taking the cap off. Because what happens is the bottom piece with the, with the stem, and this is really neat, because you can tell obviously it's not a real pipe. I mean, look at that, there's a solid top there. It's three set and it says three fluid ounces. Uh, and you see there's three fluid ounces, deep woods after shit. Even goes so far as to say, keep out of reach of children. Well, for multiple reasons, I imagine. Uh, but this would be everywhere, because they drop this bastard on the floor, and I tell you what, oh, holy hell. This was like, uh, when I accidentally got this on my fingers, it was like uh, when you go to a family uh, party or a funeral or a wedding or something, and there's always that one old fella who's still got like this, or brute by Fabergé, or this Old Spice, or I don't know what, something terrible, you know? Not the new Old Spice, the old Old Spice, the ancient spice. And they rub up against you, and it's like, uh, you smell like that for the rest of the evening. You want to choke them after a while. I, not that I personally feel that kind of vengeance in my heart. I, anyway, those are ki 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 <laughs> cool pieces of tobacco, I thought, uh, as I get a real light. And before we take a break and, and, and move on in a second. Mm. I also got this. Uh, amongst other things, but I, sh I chose to show you this one. I got a bunch of pins recently, uh, a couple from France, and this one I thought was real neat. And it is, let me see if I can get a good focus on it. Two pipes, and it says Saint Cloud. As we all know, Saint Cloud is the birthplace of the briar pipe. This guy goes on my brown gillet, on my lapel, and uh, I'm looking forward to a trip there. I'm gonna purpose to go there, I think. In life, you've got a purpose to uh, to go and do the things that you dream about doing, right? Well, hell, it never happens, you know what I mean? So I, I've done that with a lot of destinations and, uh, you know, bucket listy type stuff. I've done it already. You know, it's really great to have done it. Uh, kind of midlife, as it were, uh, you know, because I, I figure I got another 47 plus to go, you know? Uh, so, anywho, uh, this one, uh, before I relight, actually, uh, let's do this, because I don't want to get anything on this. Uh, this one's really interesting, and this bodes a story, uh, which will be uh, the last focus of the Tabakiana time. And that is that uh, in Disneyland, in 1955, when the park opened, or with the park, came a tobacco shop. Wouldn't you know it? And Rory has acquired a mint condition book of Disneyland Tobacco Shop Matching. Right on Main Street. There he is, the traditional Indian shop. Indian chief, he stands there today, but what is there today is no longer the tobacco shop. I'm gonna show you the other side of the, this is the Main Street sign on it, if I can get close enough. Get it to focus. But yeah, these these, these are, uh, and it's the full book, they're, they're all in there. Don't ask me what I paid for it, because then the wife will know. It was inexpensive in reference to its value to me. But I always thought it was fascinating that when Disneyland opened, it was at a time when pipe tobacco and cigars and cigarettes were still acceptable in public. Obviously, cigarettes, you know, I've got my issues with as an ex-cigarette smoker. But I don't think that uh, pipes should ever really be banned. You know, maybe stanky pipes, you know, or what have you and certain cigars, you know, the real pungent ones. You fellas know what I'm talking about. You guys who smoke those stinkers on purpose. And the wife warders, it's like wolfbane for your bride. Uh, but uh, anywho, I thought it was really neat that they had it open in 50, from 55 to I, I believe 1990, when they shut it down and it became uh, another shop. It, it, it was between the magic shop and uh, the, the theater there, on the theater on the, on the, on the main street there. The cinema, and they, they sold pipe tobacco and cigars and cigarettes and pipes, and uh, it was a real neat place apparently to go. And if I could go on a time machine someplace, I know that'd be a waste of a trip, but it'd be fun. 
Uh, but to this day, if you ever get back to Disneyland in the rush of madness as the world reopens, uh, check out the uh, traditional Native American Indian chieftain, as it were. Probably offending somebody. On Main Street right there, and it's now in front of the CD and DVD store. Oh, what has happened to the world? Uh, but he's there, nonetheless. Uh, I'm sure, unless they've taken him down due to cultural appropriation or some shite like that. But uh, yeah, I thought that was a cool, neat bit to share with you guys. Uh, so it's been a long, a long enough episode, I think, as it is and as it were for me to stand here and blab on a little bit about Tabakian. The history of tobacco, uh, tobacco rather, uh, and uh, its, its, its origins and uh, the cultural uh, development and, and its, its anthropological uh, origins and stuff that, you know, for the culture itself are all fascinating to me. I encourage you to do some research, read some books, uh, get some stuff like that if you got some extra spare pocket change, or if you go to like, you know, uh, antique stores or, uh, you know, even uh, garage sales, yard sales as they call them, uh, you know, look for that kind of stuff. It's all fascinating. It's all neat, old tobacco tins, uh, red mill products. They had the, the stuff called Sirocco wood. They made statues out of it. They got a bunch of that stuff as well. Boson's heads. The history of tobacco shops and the products that they sell is uh, immense and fun. At least to me, hey, but I'm a weirdo. So hopefully by next week, perhaps the week after, we'll have our interview with Mimo. In the meantime, if you want to join the Reasonable Madman's Pipe Club, DM me at Instagram. That's right, DM, poo that in your pipe and smoke it. At, poo that in your pipe and smoke it. There's just one T in the beginning. I know I, res I, I, I respectfully misspelled it. <coughs> and I never fixed it. Uh, so as I convalesce, and you DM me, I will still send out patches and stickers, and you'll be a member, and that's that. And uh, soon enough, we'll have some virtual meets and stuff like that. Uh, thanks to my buddies who answered the 6th to the 6th, which uh, from Padre, uh, Padre Piper, and uh, being called out by Steph and Skip Kane. Love you guys, you're awesome. And uh, I really love and respect everybody in the YTPC and the IGPC. You're all fantastic. Thanks for your prayers and your good thoughts as I, as I heal. And uh, I will see you next Tuesday on Put That in Your Pipe and Smoke It. Oh, yeah. Pizza time.